We're continuing our studies of metabolism and bioenergetics in Chapter 12, and in this lesson we'll be looking at ATP hydrolysis. Let's first establish the importance of ATP hydrolysis. The average human turns over his or her body weight in ATP per day, so clearly an essential process within the living organism. ATP appears to transfer energy from one thing to another. In the illustration at the bottom of our slide, we can break down a nutrient, break chemical bonds to form waste products and release energy, and we can use that energy to build an ATP molecule from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Once we have the ATP molecule, we can hydrolyze it, release the energy, and use that energy to build product from precursor. So it appears that we've transferred the energy from the nutrient to the precursor via this ATP molecule. And for that reason, sometimes ATP is referred to as the energy currency of the cell. But remember, energy is not a tangible thing. It's simply a capacity. The phosphohydride bonds of ATP are just regular covalent bonds. So why then do we sometimes refer to them as high energy bonds? It's because when we break the bond, it produces a large favorable or negative change in free energy. The question is then, why is there such a change in free energy upon hydrolysis? There are two reasons for this. First of all, the products of hydrolysis are more stable than the reactants or substrates. In our illustration, we have on the left a molecule of ATP demonstrating particularly the terminal phosphoryl group. On the right, we have inorganic phosphate released following ATP hydrolysis. On our terminal phosphoryl group, we have two negative charges. There are also two more negative charges on the other two phosphoryl groups. So multiple negative charges in close proximity, so we have high like charge or negative charge repulsion. In our product, we release some of those negative charges and that reduces the charge repulsion. Our second reason why the products are more stable has to do with resonance stabilization. Remember, this refers to delocalization of electrons. So looking again at the figure on the left, in our terminal phosphoryl group, our phosphorus atom is double bonded to one of the oxygens, and there are negative charges on the other two oxygen atoms. We can form then a resonance structure that makes this a more stable structure. Let's compare that, though, with inorganic phosphate released following ATP hydrolysis. We have greater delocalization of electrons, greater resonance stabilization, and that means the product is more stable than the reactant or substrate. So then we have two reasons why ATP hydrolysis is so energetically favorable. Less charge repulsion, greater resonance stabilization. We see a similar change in free energy associated with hydrolysis of other phosphate containing compounds in this table illustrated from your book. Here we have the standard free energy changes associated with hydrolysis of multiple phosphate compounds. And you can see they're all favorable changes, some larger than others. The larger changes simply mean that the products are much more stable than the reactants or substrates. So sometimes there's a greater energy difference before and after. It depends on the nature of the molecule and the phosphate or phosphoryl group that's being released. Just as a phosphoester bond represents a large favorable change in free energy, this can also be true for other bonds, especially thioester bonds. So we're looking here at thioester hydrolysis. In our figure on the far left, we have acetyl-CoA. CoA stands for coenzyme A. The A refers to adenine. So coenzyme A is a nucleotide derivative. It is a cofactor in many processes. Our thioester bond is highlighted in red. That's the bond connecting the acetyl group to coenzyme A. 
When this is hydrolyzed, we release the products acetate and coenzyme A, and that represents a large favorable change in delta G, approximately negative 31.5 kilojoules per mole. In the case of a phosphoester breakage, or hydrolysis, that's closer to negative 30.5 so it's slightly more favorable to break a thioester bond as compared to an oxygen ester. The reason is that although the sulfur atom is in the same column of the periodic table, it is directly beneath oxygen, meaning it's a larger atom. So the thioesters have less resonance stability than the oxygen esters, that is the reactants are less stable and so there's a greater energy difference between reactants and products. In our next video lesson, we want to look at the influences that relate to the control points for the regulation of metabolic pathways.